Good morning, everyone. Welcome to church. We want to extend a very warm welcome to you this morning uh, to worship with us at Stanhope Anglican Church, at the precious name of our Lord Jesus Christ. The Bible tells us that the steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. His mercies never come to an end. They are new every morning, great is thy faithfulness. The Lord renews his mercy upon us every morning. Do you know that? How good is that? That every morning God renews his mercy upon us. And I, I, we must understand that only Jesus who can do that. Because to renew the mercy, his mercy, he went to the cross. He died, suffered, and rose again the third day to forgive us our sins and to renew his mercy upon us. So there is no one else that you can trust who can renew their mercy on us every morning. Jesus outshines them all. There is no one who can be compared to Jesus. And that's why we're going to sing our first song, Our God is greater. I think it's still us just singing. So please stand, clap along. I don't think you, I'm not even, I don't think interpretive dance is a thing we're allowed to do anymore. I'm not sure. Probably never. I don't think I can do it. That's right. Feel free, Paul. Water you turned into wine. Open the eyes of the blind. There's no darkness you shine out of the ashes we rise there's no As you know, we are continuing our series of sermons on the book of Mark, and uh, today is the third uh, sermon that we are going to hear 
from the passage from chapter 9 to 16. And uh, today we're going to look at Mark chapter 10, verses 32 to 52, uh, the way of Jesus. And we are looking forward to Steve to bring the Lord's word to us. Uh, before that, we would like to say a prayer of confession, which will come up on the screen. Let's all say that prayer together. Heavenly Father, we praise you for adopting us as your children and making us heirs of eternal life. In your mercy, you have washed us from our sins and made us clean in your sight. Yet, we still fail to love you and serve you as we should. Forgive us our sins and renew us by your grace that we may continue to grow as members of Christ, in whom alone is our salvation. Amen. I've got to share some news with you, and uh, we started our Christianity Explored course uh, last Monday. Uh, we had seven participants out of the 12 who have registered, but this Monday I'm told that all the 12 will be there. Please keep praying for that program. And the second thing that we want to want your prayers is for the ESL. The ESL was launched on the 12th of February, uh, and we had eight participants uh, on that Friday. And lo and behold, last Friday we had 16 participants. So all these point to one thing, that our church, uh, we can see and experience the favor of God upon us. That's the only thing. that. So we please keep on praying that people will come to know the Lord and be rooted in the word. And we want you to pray for Christianity Explode and uh, ESL. So keep that in mind as we continue with our service. Well, good morning, everyone. It's uh, great to see you. Hi to all those uh, online at home. Uh, if you are new, a special welcome uh, to you. Um, yeah, I'd love to, to meet you afterwards. Uh, we, we have something called Start Out, and uh, this is uh, happening tomorrow night. So if, you, if you're new, if you've been new in the last six months, and you're yet to come to a Start Out, uh, why not come along tomorrow night, unless you're doing Christianity Explored? But if that's not you, come along and uh, meet, meet a few other new people, hear more about the church, you can ask a question, and we want to help you to be able to, to connect in here uh, to Stanhope Anglican Church, and I want you to, to grow wherever you're at uh, in your, your walk uh, with the Lord. And also, I want to let you know about our annual general meeting. Uh, we'll be next Sunday uh, after church at 11.45. Uh, so there are nomination forms up the back, as well as the report, so you can pick up one of those and uh, there are already a good number of uh, nominations, so that's really encouraging, uh, lots of interest, uh, which is good. Uh, the AGM, if you've never been part of it before, uh, you can get to hear how God has been at work here uh, in the last 12 months, uh, hear about the, the finances, our giving uh, to God's work, and also electing uh, different positions uh, who, who represent uh, us. Uh, if you've got any questions about it, um, come and see uh, myself or uh, anyone else who, who's been up the front um, after it. Thank you. The mystery of the cross I cannot comprehend The agonies of Calvary You, the perfect Holy One Drank the bitter cup reserved for me. Your blood has washed away my sin. Jesus, thank you. The Father's wrath completely satisfied. Jesus, thank you. Once your enemy, now seated at your table. Jesus, thank you. Perfect. 
like sacrifice I've been brought you Your enemy you made your friend Pouring out the riches of your glorious grace Your mercy and your kindness know no end Because your blood has washed away my sin Jesus then the Father's rock completely satisfied. Jesus, thank you. Once your enemy, now seated at your table. Jesus, thank you. Lover of I want to live for you, lover of my soul. I want to live for you, lover of my soul. Rock, completely satisfied, Jesus, that your blood has washed away my sin, Jesus, thank you, my Father's wrath, completely satisfied, Jesus, thank you, once your enemy, now seated at your table, Jesus, thank you. Good morning, everyone. I hope you're doing well. My name is Rachel. If we haven't met, I work with the kids and youth here. So just a few quick updates for kids and youth. Um, the first one is a massive praise point. Um, we had the youth group praying on Thursday, but we now have accommodation for kick in April. So we will be taking a group um, out to kick at KCC. So praise the Lord for that. Um, the next thing um, is in the next two weeks, if you're a parent, could you please get in a registration form for your kids, whether they're doing kids' church, youth church, or youth group? Uh, that really helps us leaders lead with confidence to know which kids have allergies. It gives us a chance to hear from parents if you have any concerns. And then also fun stuff like who can have lollies. Um, yeah. So uh, if you could do that by February 7th, that would be amazing. And for our kids' church team. We will have a brief meeting after church in two weeks, February 7th as well, to have a quick chat. Thanks so much. Kids and youth, you are dismissed. Uh, what a great privilege it is um, to come to the God of the universe uh, in prayer. So let us pray. The psalmist reminds us that great is the Lord and most worthy of praise. His greatness no one can fathom. One generation commends your works to another. They tell of your mighty acts. Father, we come to you with hearts full of thankfulness because you are a God indeed worthy of honor and praise. We are in awe of your power and greatness in creation. We are in awe of your love and patience towards us. Despite our disobedience, distrust, and sometimes outright rebellion towards you. Heavenly Father, we confess that in many ways and in, at many times, we do not give you the honor and praise you deserve. And for this, we are sorry and ask for forgiveness. Father, you rightly deserve all of our hearts and devotion for who you are and your great and mighty acts in history, none more so than in the sending of your son, Jesus, who died for us, for our rebellion, so that we may be forgiven. Father, we thank you for Jesus and the forgiveness and living hope we can have because of his life, death, 
resurrection and ascension. We thank you that in your kindness that you sent us your Holy Spirit to remind us, to convict us, and to help us, uh, to point and to point us to our heavenly home that you have prepared for us in advance. Father, now we turn and pray for the world that you have created. We know, Father, that in this world that has largely turned its back on you, a world that is groaning under its bondage to decay, there will be pain, sickness, injustice, and suffering in its many forms. At this time, we pray for the impacts and damage of COVID, uh, which is still causing great damage, both, both directly and indirectly, in many parts of the world. Father, we ask that you heal those who are sick, restore their bodies to full health. Father, we ask that you restrain the spread. We know the great hardships this sickness and the lockdowns and isolation have caused for many, both in wealthy and poorer countries, and we ask for restoration. We specifically pray for governmental and health leaders in each country. We ask that you give them the great wisdom they need to know what the best thing to do for their citizens. Father, we pray for the rollout of the vaccine, which you in your kindness have enabled scientists to create and produce on mass scale. We pray that the rollout may be safe, efficient and fair. We especially pray for the poorer countries where the costs and logistics of rolling out a vaccine may seem impossible. We ask that you move people and nations to be generous to assist countries who would need significant help. Father, we know ultimately you are in control, and whether it's through the vaccine or by some other means, you can contain and eliminate the virus, and we pray earnestly for this. Heavenly Father, we pray that everyone would see very, very clearly from this, and will know that you are indeed, that we are indeed not in control, and that you are. Help many to see how fragile and fleeting life can be. We pray, Father, that many people, including us, would slow down and ask the bigger questions of life and ultimately find or renew our real hope in you. For our church, Father, we thank you uh, for the privilege of gathering to together as your people here at Stanhope Gardens. We thank you for the privilege of doing life together and lifting each other up in prayer. Help us spur each other on to seek you. Help us spur each other on to love you uh, and those around us more. Help us to spur each other on to be obedient to your word. Help us to spur each other on to be a witness in the circles you have put us in. Help us um, spur each other on in lifting up each, other's, each other in, in our burdens, especially in times of grief, uh, sickness and sadness. Uh, help us spur each other on uh, to deny ourselves, pick up the cross and follow you with all joy and contentment. Help us to know that there is um, no sense in seeking and gaining the whole world and in the meantime forfeiting our soul in the process. Father, we pray that we may be a blessing in this community here at Stanhope Gardens. Where there are needs, Father, help us as a church and as individuals to step up and show genuine love and care. Father, show us where the needs are in this community and help us to know how to best assist. Help us to love those around us deeply and for those who don't know your glorious gospel, help us to with gentleness and clarity share and show the real hope and peace that can be found in Jesus. We ask that Jesus would be unmasked in the minds and hearts of many in this community. Father, we pray for the leaders uh, you have graciously placed among us uh, here at this church. Pray for Steve, Edwin, Rachel, Kathy, David and James. We ask that amongst their busy schedules that you help them in their walks with you, that they may be regularly spending time listening to you and re in reading your word and speaking to you in prayer. We ask that these times um, uh, may continue to shape their thinking and lives and be of great encouragement to them. And Father, in this new year, as new ministries uh, such as 5pm and the English classes and new growth groups start, uh, we pray that you give them, together with all of us, whatever we need to make these ministries fruitful for you and your kingdom. We thank you for the gifts and training uh, that you, give, you have given our leaders, and we ask that, you, uh, that we may be encouraged, trained, rebuked, and built up as the body of Christ as they serve us the way they do. 
And finally, Father, we come to you um, uh, as we get ready to hear your word uh, read and explained to us. We ask that you soften our hearts and open our eyes to listen to what you have to teach us, teach to us today. Help us to see more clearly what it means to deny ourselves, pick up our crosses and follow you. Father, we ask that um, as we hear your word that we may be convicted and be renewed in our minds. We pray that our understanding may not be futile, but bear much fruit in our lives and increase our love for you and for others. For the sake of your son and, and his glorious kingdom uh, that we look forward to. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Uh, well, for some of you uh, looking around, uh, this morning is your, your very first Sunday with us, and so we're very pleased that you can be uh, here uh, with us. Uh, for us as a church, uh, this is our, our fourth year as, as a parish, and so one week out from our annual general meeting, um, actually had never had so many nominations um, a week out, so it's good, that's encouraging. So for the positions of a warden, a parish councillor, a parish nominator, a synod rep, uh, who are the type of people we want to be nominating? And who are the type of people who should be accepting those nominations or declining them? And would it be right for someone uh, to put themselves forward for one of these positions? Well, God's word this morning that we're about to, uh, to read, to hear, to look at together uh, speaks to this, uh, but more than just those who will represent us on our parish council, uh, it, it speaks to, to every single one of us uh, who would call ourselves uh, a Christian. It speaks to our, our attitude, our motive uh, in what we do, in what we do not just here at church, uh, but, but in all of life, um, at home, at work, in the community, wherever we are, whatever it is that we're doing. But it speaks to those who are not Christian as well. Because what we're going to see this morning is we're going, to, we're going to see Jesus. We're going to see the way of Jesus. And that would be the way of his followers as well. So I want to invite you to uh, turn up, if you have it in your Bible or on your phone, uh, to Mark uh, chapter 10 uh, from verse 32. And so Paul and Megan are going to read that. Um, if you don't have a Bible with you, that's all right. Um, use your ears and listen, listen carefully to the Word of God. They were on their way up to Jerusalem with Jesus leading the way. And the disciples were astonished, while those who followed were afraid. Again, he took the twelve aside and told them what was going to happen to him. We are going up to Jerusalem and the Son of Man will be delivered over to the chief priests and the teachers of the law. They will condemn him to death and will hand him over to the Gentiles who will mock him and spit on him, flog him and kill him. Three days later, he will rise. Then James and John, the sons of Zebedee, came to him. Teacher, we want you to do for us whatever we ask. What do you want me to do for you? Let one of us sit at your right hand and the other at your left in your glory. You don't know what you're asking. Can you drink the cup I drink or be baptised with the baptism I am baptised with? We can. You will drink the cup I drink and be baptised with the baptism I am baptised with. But to sit at my right or left is not for me to grant. These places belong to those for whom they have been prepared. When the ten heard about this, they became indignant with James and John. Jesus called them together. You know that those who are regarded as rulers of the Gentiles lord it over them, and their high officials exercise authority over them. Not so with you. Instead, whoever wants to become great among you must be your servant, and whoever wants to be first must be slave of all. For even the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve, and to give his life as a ransom for many. Then they came to Jericho. 
As Jesus and his disciples, together with a large crowd, were leaving the city, a blind man, Bartimaeus, which means son of Timaeus, was sitting by the roadside begging. When he heard that it was Jesus of Nazareth, he began to shout, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. Many rebuked him and told him to be quiet. But he shouted all the more, Son of David, have mercy on me. Jesus stopped. Call him. So they called to the blind man, Cheer up, on your feet, he's calling you. Throwing his cloak aside, he jumped to his feet and came to Jesus. What do you want me to do for you? Rabbi, I want to see. Go, your faith has healed you. Immediately he received his sight and followed Jesus along the road. Thank you. Uh, well, please do uh, leave that open uh, so that you can follow on. And I uh, have a look at the last line there. Uh, Bartimaeus, he's healed by Jesus. And what does Jesus say to him? Go your way. And what is it that he does? Immediately, he received his sight and followed Jesus along the road. Uh, he goes the way of Jesus. Uh, that is the way he goes. You see, he sees who Jesus is. Uh, he, is he is saved. He's healed by Jesus. And once saved, once healed, he goes the way of Jesus. And so that is my question uh, for all of us today. Uh, are we prepared to go the way of Jesus. Are you prepared to go the way of Jesus? Am I prepared to go the way of Jesus? What is the way? Uh, we'll see two main things here. And the first, uh, you'll, you'll see it there. Have a look at verses 32 to 34. Uh, verse 32. They were on their, their way up to Jerusalem, on the road to Jerusalem, with Jesus leading the way. Okay, so they're headed for Jerusalem. This is it. Three years they've been together. They're on their way to Jerusalem. What is it that's going to happen in Jerusalem? Verse 33, we're going up to Jerusalem. The Son of Man will be delivered over to the chief priests and the teachers of the law. They will condemn him to death and will hand him over to the Gentiles who will mock him and spit on him, flog him and kill him. Three days later, he will rise. He is on the way to the cross where he's going to be delivered, delivered over to the Jewish leaders. Uh, he's going to be condemned uh, to death and then handed over to the Gentiles. And they will flog him, they will spit on him, and they will kill him. And he will rise three days later. Now, the way of Jesus, the way of Jesus is suffering. Uh, it is sacrifice. Well, what, what about his followers? Uh, what about for the disciples? Uh, what about for us uh, today? What will it mean uh, for us uh, today? Well, we have James and John here, uh, the sons of Zebedee. And so it was three years earlier uh, where they weren't with Jesus. Uh, they were with uh, one another. They were with the, with the dad on the boat with their nets. And then Jesus comes up to them. And what does Jesus say to them? Leave your nets and follow me. And that's what they did. What will it mean for them now to keep following Jesus? He's about to be killed. What's that going to look like for them now? Well, they come to Jesus with a request. Teacher, we want you to do for us whatever we ask. I don't know what you make of that. It's pretty bold, isn't it? Especially after what Jesus has just said, what's going to happen to him. This is what they want Jesus to do uh, for them. Jesus responds pretty graciously, really. What do you want me to do for you? And together they reply, let one of us sit at your right and the other at your left in glory. They want the top spots. They want to be there, right with Jesus, at his left, on his right. They want, to, they want to be first. 
And so they've, they've got in ahead of the other disciples and they've said, this is what we want. You can do this. Give us these spots. Now this comes after everything Jesus has been teaching them. What, what have we seen? Like last week, we've been reading these chapters. Jesus has been telling them, the first will be last and the last will be first. Uh, last week, uh, we saw um, in um, Mark 9, 35, the disciples, they're arguing amongst themselves, Who, who's the greatest? And so Jesus gets them together, sits them down, and he says in Mark 9, uh, verse 35, he says there, Anyone who wants to be first must be the very last and the servant of all. Now James and John, they don't get it, do they? They still don't see who Jesus is. They don't, they don't get uh, what it means. They're trying to position themselves. So how's Jesus going to respond this time? Jesus says, You don't know what you're asking. Can you drink the cup I drink or be baptised with the baptism I am baptised with? Now, the, what, what's the answer to that, that question is, it's no, isn't it? <laughs> um, yet, they will suffer, but it's going to be differently to Jesus. Uh, the cup... The baptism here, it's, it's a little bit hard to understand. Uh, maybe not, not sure, first seeing that, just what that uh, means. Uh, but both of them have to do with suffering. And not just a physical suffering, uh, which Jesus will do on the, on the cross. It's more than that. It has to do with judgment and the wrath of God. And that, that's what the cup symbolises. And many places in the Old Testament uh, does refer to, to the cup and drinking of the cup. Uh, so in the prophet Isaiah, uh, one of those um, yeah, cases in um, Isaiah 51, verse 17. 51:17. Do we have... There we go. Magic. It says there, Awake, awake, rise up, Jerusalem. You who have drunk from the hand of the Lord, the cup of his wrath, you who have drained its dregs, are the goblet that makes people stagger. Now this, this is what Jesus does on the cross. This cup that he's talking about here. We will come back to it in a few chapters as well. This is talking about the wrath of God. This, this cup. And he, he drinks it. So that you don't have to. So that I don't have to. Jesus drinks it himself. So what's it mean then when Jesus says in verse 39, you will drink the cup I drink and be baptised with the baptism I'm baptised with? What does that mean? Because <laughs> they're not going to the cross. They're not drinking the, the wrath of God. Jesus Jesus does this himself. Well, the way of Jesus is the way of suffering. And so while they mightn't be crucified on the cross and bear the judgment of God in that sense, for them to follow Jesus, there would be suffering. Uh, both of these guys, James and John, uh, would be uh, faithful Christian leaders uh, and they would suffer. Uh, not that long after Jesus um, is resurrected and then is, uh, ascends, uh, James, uh, we're told in Acts uh, chapter 12, uh, we've got King Herod and all of those who belong uh, to Jesus. Uh, he, he has arrested. And we read in Acts 12, uh, 1 and 2, we see there James, He's put to death with the sword. Suffering. Uh, for John, the Apostle John, uh, he is exiled. Um, we read in Revelation that he is on the island of, of Patmos. Uh, Revelation 1.9. I, John, your brother and companion in the suffering and kingdom and patient endurance 
that are ours in Jesus was on the island of Patmos because of the word of God and the testimony of Jesus. James and John, they would be raised up in glory. They would be with Jesus in glory. But first, they would suffer. And so it's not theirs to request the positions of glory. And it tells us here, Jesus says, it's not even up to him to grant these positions of glory. The way of Jesus is the way of suffering. And that is the way for Jesus' followers as well. Suffering and then glory. Well, how's this request of um, James and John go down with the other disciples? Goes down really well with them? No, it doesn't. So Jesus gets them all together again so that they can understand that the way of Jesus is different to the way of the world. So have a look from verse 42. Jesus says to them, this is maybe a bit of a rebuke, To James and John, you know that those who are regarded as rulers of the Gentiles lord it over them, and their high officials exercise authority over them. Not so with you. Instead, whoever wants to become great among you must be your servant, and whoever wants to be first must be slave of all. For even, and we'll come to that, the way of Jesus. Uh, The the second aspect of it, so we've seen the suffering, but the second aspect of the way of Jesus is service. It's not lording it over others. Um, Jesus says that's that's the way of the world, but it's serving, serving others. Now that's that's what we want with our parish council, isn't it? Uh, Those that would represent us there, uh, we want them uh, to have this attitude. Uh, And I would say our wardens at the moment, Parish councillors, the treasurer, those who have been there for two years because of COVID, there were no, no elections last year, um, have done a, a great job uh, in serving, serving us all, uh, not using their, their position in any way uh, for themselves, not lording it over others, but serving the whole church and seeing uh, what is going to be for the good of the whole church uh, so that we can uh, get on uh, with, with gospel ministry. Uh, they've enabled us to, um, to be able to, to move in uh, to this building. Uh, for me, uh, as the, the senior leader here, uh, I am to serve. I am not to use my, my position uh, to lord it over uh, anyone here. Uh, it is a, an honour and a privilege, uh, a responsibility that I have Um, But it is one where I am to serve, not use my position um, in any way for any personal gain. I'm no different to you. Just trying to follow Jesus, someone who's been forgiven by Jesus and is now seeking uh, to love and live like him. And I want to keep pointing you to Jesus that, that we would all do that. And if I'm ever doing otherwise, then you might need to raise that with me or speak to a warden so that they can uh, have a word to me. Now, this speaks into the home as well, doesn't it? Um, So not just um, those that might be serving uh, at at church. Um, And I always mention parish council because that's where we're at at the moment, but you could think about any any role, any leader here. But what, what about the home? Uh, the home, think about, especially those who are married, think about your marriage vows. Those vows that you made uh, when, you, when you got married uh, are very much other person-centred, aren't they? What it is that you, you promised. Loving and serving, uh, giving due honour, forsaking all others, loving and protecting. All about the one that you married and what you will do. Right? Not lording it over them. Not abusing them. And so men and women, 
uh, husbands and wives, uh, where there is any lording it over your spouse or any abuse in the home or here in the church, um, it must stop because that is not the way of Jesus. It is not the way of Jesus' followers. And so if it is present here in this church at all uh, or in your home, then it must stop uh, because there is no place for bullying, uh, for abuse, for controlling uh, in the church, in the home. What is the way of Jesus? Have a look. Mark 10, verse 45. Even the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve and to give his life as a ransom for many. Jesus has come. Who is Jesus? The Son of God. God himself, he's come to be served. No, he's come into this world that he was there, part of the creation. He was there. Everything has been made for him and through him. He enters it to serve. He lays down his life. He gives his life as a ransom. This is that the Son of Man, uh, the one whom in, in Daniel 7, it tells us there that, that this one, the Son of Man, has all power, all authority, all glory is his. And as he enters the world, what is it that he does? He serves and he gives his life as a ransom. Here he is on, on the way, on the road to Jerusalem, on the way to the cross to pay the price. The price that you deserve, that I deserve. Jesus takes it himself. The cup, he drinks it. The wrath of God that we deserve, he takes it himself. This is Jesus laying down his life in service, giving his life as a ransom for many. And as he does that, the price is paid. He's done it 100%. He pays the price. This is the way of Jesus. A way of suffering and a way of service. And it's to be our way as well. If we're following Jesus, this is to be our way as well. Now they come to Jericho. Jericho is pretty close to Jerusalem. So at this point, they've made... Most their their journey. It's about 30 kilometers away from Jerusalem. They come to Jericho. And here we have Bartimaeus, this blind man. This blind man, but he sees. He sees who Jesus is. He knows Jesus is coming. He's, he's heard that. And so what does he do? He calls out, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. Now, this man is blind. He is one of the least of all the people. And we looked at that last week. The least. Bartimaeus is one of the least. He is blind. What do the people say to him? What do they say? They tell him to shut up. Right? He's blind. He's not considered anything. What does he do? Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. This is his one opportunity to ask Jesus for mercy. And he is not going to let that pass by. Jesus is there. Jesus is about to, to be meters away from him. He is not going to let this one opportunity for mercy pass him by. James and John, what is it that they ask Jesus for? Glory, this man, mercy. And Jesus says to this man, the same as he said to James and John, oh, what is it you want me to do for you? I want to see. And 
And Jesus grants him his request. They had asked for glory. They didn't get the glory. He asked for mercy. He gets mercy. He sees. Well, now he can see, but he already saw. He saw who Jesus was, the son of, son of David. He is God's king. He knew that Jesus could heal him. He had faith in Jesus. Jesus says, go your way. He doesn't just go his way. He goes the way of Jesus. If you're here today and you don't know Jesus, can I say to you, don't let this opportunity pass you by. Jesus is the one who can give you mercy. Jesus is the one who goes to the cross for you so that you don't have to drink that cup yourself. The wrath, Jesus takes it. He is offering you mercy. The loving kindness of God. Do not let Jesus pass by. He is giving you mercy. And for us who've received that mercy, we should rejoice, rejoice for who Jesus is. But we should be like Bart, right? And we should go the way of Jesus. And that way is suffering and service. But where will it lead? It will lead to glory, eternal life with Jesus. Now, not everyone here this morning is going to go the way of Bart. Not everyone is going to ask for mercy. And not everyone is going to be prepared uh, to suffer and to serve. Uh, there will be some here who will keep going the way of the world. But go that way, and then when your day comes, that judgment that Jesus is offering to take in your place... You will have to take that. So let Jesus have mercy upon you. And let us go the way of Bart, the way of Jesus. Let me pray. Heavenly Father, we do thank you so much for Jesus. Thank you that he went to the cross. Thank you that he gave his life as a ransom for many. That he drank the cup that he paid the price. He paid it all. And by faith in him, we are forgiven. We receive mercy. Father, we, we thank you for Jesus. We don't deserve this, but we thank you that you have made this possible because you want us to know you and worship you. So help, help us now to go the way of Jesus, that we would be prepared to suffer, prepared to serve, that we would put other people before ourselves. Amen. We're going to finish uh, with a song. Again, just the three of us singing. If you're at home, feel free to sing along. If you're here, hum along. Um, stand or sit as you feel comfortable.
crimson stain He washed it white as snow Jesus modeled for us the way of the cross. There is suffering for every Christian uh, before we attain our eternal glory. So in life, when, we, when things don't go our way as Christians, when our patience is tested, when our faith is tested, will we say like the psalmist, whom have I in heaven but thee? There is none upon earth that I desire besides thee. Let me pray for us. Lord, I, for our Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, for this morning. We thank you for the message that you have uh, given to us, Lord, to take with us. That our Christian life will be fraught with challenges of suffering. And Lord, help us to focus our eyes on Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So let's enjoy morning tea together. <laughs>